100 Interesting Things to Learn About Cryptography For a 128-bit encryption key, there are 340 billion 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 possible keys. A billion is a thousand million. The calculation for this is 2 to the power of 128 divided by 10 to the power of 9 to the power of 4. For a 256-bit encryption key, there are 115,792 billion, 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 billion possible keys. The calculation for this is 2 to the power of 256 divided by 10 to the power of 9 to the power of 8. There are 8 billions there. That's a lot of keys. To crack a 128-bit encryption key with brute force, using a cracker running at 1 tera cracks per second, will take, on average, 5 million 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 years to crack. A tera is a thousand billion. The calculation, if you're interested, is 2 to the power of 128 divided by 1 times 10 to the power of 12 divided by 2, divided by 60, divided by 60, divided by 24, divided by 365, divided by 10 to the power of 6 to the power of 3. The divided by 2 relates to the average time, and the divided by 60 is converting from seconds to minutes, 60 again is from minutes to hours, and 24 is to, to uh, uh, days, and then 365 is years. For a 256-bit key, this is 1,835 million, 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 million years. That's a lot of years just to crack a single 256-bit encryption key, and that's the average time. It will take you double that time as the worst case. So it could take you 3,600 million, 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 million years to find it if you're a little bit unlucky. For the brute force cracking of a 35-bit symmetric key, such as we use in AES, you will only need to boil the amount of energy for uh, the water in a teaspoon uh, to crack that. For a 50-bit key, you will need enough money to boil the water in a shower. For a 90-bit symmetric key, you would need the energy to boil a sea. And for a 105-bit symmetric key, you will need to boil an ocean. <laughs> and for a 128 bit key at the present time there just isn't enough water on the planet to boil for that so if you want to crack a 128 bit encryption key you're going to have a very hefty electricity bill with symmetric key encryption anything below 72 bits is relatively inexpensive to crack with brute force one of the first symmetric key methods was the Lucifer cipher and was created by Horst Feistel at IBM. It was further developed into the DES encryption method and which is still around, but we now know it as 3DES. Many at the time of the adoption of DES felt that its 56-bit encryption key was too small to be secure and that the NSA had a role in limiting this size. With a block cipher, we only have to deal with a fixed size of blocks. DES and 3DES use a 64-bit or 8-byte block size, and AES uses a 128-bit block size or 16 bytes. With symmetric key methods, we have block ciphers such as DES, AES CBC, AES ECB, or stream ciphers such as ChaCha20 and RC4. In order to enhance security, AES has a number of rounds where parts of the key are applied. With a 128-bit AES, we have 10 rounds and 14 rounds for 256-bit AES. 
In AES, we use S boxes to scramble the bytes and which is applied for each round. When decrypting, we have the inverse of the S box for that we used in the encryption process. A salt, nonce or initialization vector is used with an encryption key in order to change the ciphertext for the same given input. Stream ciphers are generally much faster than block ciphers and can generally be processed in parallel. With the Diffie-Hellman method, Bob creates X and shares G to the power of X mod P and Alice creates Y and shares G to the power of Y mod P. The G is the generator and P is a large prime number. The shared key that they have in the end is G to the power of X, Y to the mod P. Ralph Merkel, the boy genius, submitted a patent on the 5th of September 1979 and which outlined the Merkel hash tree. This is used to create a block hash in blockchain. Ralph Merkel's PhD supervisor was Marty Hellman, famous for the co-creation of the Diffie-Hellman method. Audi Shamir defined a secret shear method and which defines a mathematical equation for the sharing of x and, x and y point and where a constant value is the of the equation is the secret. With Shamir's secret shares, or SSS, for a quadratic equation of y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6, then the secret is 6. We can share three points at x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. This will give y equal to 12, y equal to 20, and y equal to 20, respectively. With the points of 1, 12, 2, 20, and 3, 20, we should be able to recover the value of 6. Otto Schmier actually broke the Merkel-Hellman knapsack method at a live event at a rump session of a conference. With secret shares, with the highest polynomial of n, we need n plus 1 points to come together to be able to regenerate a secret. For example, y is equal to 2x plus 5 needs 2 points to come together, while y is equal to x squared plus 15x plus 4 needs 3 points. The first usable public key encryption method was RSA and created by Revest, Shamir and Edelman. It was first published in 1979 and defined in a RSA patent entitled Cryptographic Communication Systems and Method. In public key encryption, we use the public key to encrypt data and the private key to decrypt it. In digital signing, we use the private key to sign a hash and create a digital signature, and then the associated public key will verify the signature. Len Edelman, the A and the RSA method, thought that the RSA paper would be one of the least significant papers he would ever publish. He was wrong. The RSA method, method came to Ron Rivest while he slept on a couch. Martin Gardner published information on the RSA method in his Scientific American article. Initially, there were 4,000 requests for the paper, and which rose to 7,000, and it took until December 1977 for them to be posted. In the security of RSA, we base it on the multiplication of two random prime numbers, P and Q, and create a public modulus N. The difficulty of RSA is the difficulty in factorising this modulus. Once factorised, it is easy to decrypt the ciphertext that has been encrypted using the related modulus. In RSA, we have a public key of E and N, N is the public key modulus, with the public modulus, and a private key of D and N. E is the public exponent and D is the private exponent. The public exponent is normally set to 65,537 these days. The binary value of 65,537 is one uh, lots of zeros and 
I'll go through them. One zero 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 one. That's the reason we don't say things in binary and we normally use hexadecimal. This number is efficient in producing ciphertext in RSA because of all the zeros. In RSA, the ciphertext is computed from a message of m as c is equal to m to the power of e mod n and is decrypted with the message is equal to c to the power of d mod n. Just beautiful. We compute the private exponent from the inverse of the public exponent e modulus phi and where phi is equal to p minus 1 times q minus 1. If we can determine p and q, we can easily determine phi and thus crack the private key. Anything below a 738-bit public modulus is relatively inexpensive to crack for RSA. To crack 2K RSA, or 2048-bit RSA, at the current time, would need you would need to boil every ocean on the planet to break it. RSA requires padding in its security. A popular method has been PK, PCKS number 1v1.5, but this is not provably secure and susceptible to the Bleichenbachter attack. An improved method is optimal asymmetric encryption padding or OE, OAEP and was defined by Belair and Rogaway Rug, and standardised in PKCS number 1 version 2. The main entity contained in a digital certificate is the public key of a named entity. This is either RSA or elliptic curve. A digital signature is signed with the private key of a trusted entity, Trent. The public key of Trent is then used to prove the integrity and the trust of the associated public key. For an elliptic curve of y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b mod p, not every xy point is possible. The total number of points is then defined as the order of the curve or n. ECC, or elliptic curve cryptography, was invented by Niall Koblitz and Victor S. Miller in 1985. Elliptic curve cryptography methods did not take off until 2004. In ECC, the public key is a point on the elliptic curve. For SEPT256K1, we have a 256-bit private key and thus a 512-bit XY point for the public key. A 04 in the pub at the start of the public key defines an uncompressed public key and thus an XY point, whereas a 02 or a 03 are compressed versions of the points and only have the X coordinate and whether the Y coordinate is odd or even. If we have the X value, we can compute a Y value, but there will be two of these Y values. They will either be odd or even. When we take the square root of an integer in our normal mass, we end up with a plus and minus value, which is equivalent in this case. Satoshi Nakamoto selected the sept 256 k one curve for Bitcoin, and which gives an equivalence of 128-bit security. As we've seen, it takes a lot of energy uh, to be able to crack that size of, of security. The sept 256 k one curve uses the mapping of y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7 mod p and is known as a short via Strass curve. The prime number used in sept 256 k one is 2 to the power of 256 minus 2 to the power of 32 minus 2 to the power of 9 minus 2 to the power of 8 minus 2 to the power of 7 minus 2 to the power of 6 minus 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. This is a prime number. An uncompressed SEPT256 key 1 public key has 512 bits and is an XY point on the curve. The point starts with a 0, 4. The compressed SEPT256 public key 
only stores the x-coordinate value and whether the y-coordinate is odd or even. It starts with 0, 2 for the y-coordinate being even, otherwise with 0, 3. In computing the public key in ECC of A times G, we use the Montgomery multiplication method and which was created by Peter Montgomery in 1985 in a paper entitled Modular Multiplication Without Trial Division. The G, by the way, is the base point on the curve. A is the scalar value and normally the private key. Elliptic curve methods have two basic operations, point adding P plus Q and point doubling 2 times P. These can be combined to provide a scalar operation of A times G. In 1999, Don Johnston, Alfred Menez published a classic paper on the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm ECDSA. It was based on the DSA digital signature algorithm method and which was created by David W. Kravitz in a patent which was assigned to the US. ECDSA is a digital signature method and requires a random nonce value k and which should never be reused or repeated. ECDSA is the equivalent is the elliptic curve equivalent version of the DSA signature method.